Woohoo! It's Create Day! Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today I want to share with you this easy technique for making a copper patina with textured rust. It's pretty simple and you don't need any special supplies. So let's get to it. For the first step I will be using Folk Art's patina colored acrylic paint. I uh, had this loaf pan it was pretty old and uh, had didn't have a lot of color to it and I wanted this project to look like it was originally copper so I went ahead and put a coat of the copper metallic paint over the entire pan and with the patina paint I watered it down a little bit on my plate and then I'm just applying it up at the top of the loaf pan and squirting water on it so that it will run down so it will look like it has just naturally aged being out in the weather. You just have to um, you know add a little bit spray it down see how it looks and then go back over it where you didn't get enough um, of the paint on there. I try to put it any area that I think it would um, accumulate more heavily, like coming out of the little hole in the front that I, I drilled the hole to put a knob in at the very end. And there's these little creases on the ends of the pan. I wanted to make sure there was plenty in there. And then I just had to finish it up on the top so that there was patina all the way around. Once that it had dried, I went back a second time and added more where I thought it needed it. Now the next thing I did was I wanted to bring back a little more of the copper, but I also wanted it to be more aged. So I'm mixing a little bit of the copper metallic paint with just a regular black acrylic paint and brushing it on just in random areas and wiping it off um, so that it just looks more muted and it's kind of like you're trying to push that color back behind the patina if that makes sense. So I'm just repeating, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm repeating that process all the way around. And this is really personal choice if you want to do this step or not. Um, so now I wanted to <clears throat> make the patina a little more weathered. So I took some of the original patina color and mixed with a darker green and I'm just uh, getting a little bit on a sponge and sponging that on all over the piece. Once that was dry, it was time to move on to the rust. I'm using Red Alert, Georgia Clay, Yellow Ochre, and Espresso. But the secret ingredient is baking soda. So I started with the brown, the espresso, and dipped it into the paint and put the paintbrush into the baking soda and applied it that way. 
and then I just went to each of the different colors. Go to the red, dip your brush in the baking soda and apply that and then go to the next color. Um, just back and forth between the colors until you get the look of rust and it's just really cool with the buildup of the baking soda. It just gives it so much texture and it looks all crunchy and really rusty. I chose these colors because if you look at rust it has um, all these different shades in there. You, you've got to have some of that um, kind of mustardy yellow and the brown and like an orangey red and a clay color. Just very um, realistic looking. Another method you can use is um, applying your paint and then sprinkling cinnamon on it. And I've done that in the past uh, for a prop in my haunted house. I love the way this turned out. Absolutely love it. But anyway, uh, the cinnamon one that I did, it looked really good. And um, it's probably actually better if you're doing a large piece. This might get a little um, just time consuming if you were doing a larger item. But for something small like this little pan, this I would absolutely do this over the cinnamon method. So now all my rust is on there and it's all dried and I want to just kind of grunge it up a little bit more. So I'm going in with my Spanish Copper Rub and Buff and just putting it on with my finger and wiping it back with a cloth. Again this just is like another layer that just adds more depth and realism. And here's the knob that goes on the front of the uh, loaf pan. Um, I'm just adding some black paint down into the little crevices. I picked this one because it has all that built-in texture already on it that would be perfect for this little project. And so now I'm putting the patina on there and uh, spritzing the water to kind of get it to thin out a little bit. And when it was dry, I just went over it with a little bit of sandpaper so I could bring back some of that original finish. And then I uh, could go in and add my rust effects using the same thing I did on the pan, just going back and forth between the paint, the baking soda, and then uh, the different colors. And then when that was dry, I did the same thing with the rub and buff on the knob that I did on the pan. Just kind of highlighting the raised areas on the knob. Looks old and grungy now. So I screwed that in to my pan and now I'm adding the floral foam. Um, I picked up some little succulents at the Dollar Tree and I'm not thrilled with the way they look. I'm probably going to switch those out. But they came in these little plastic boxes so I just took them out of the boxes so I can stick them into my uh, floral foam. So I started off with the Spanish moss, filling in the little gaps around the floral foam. And then I had reindeer moss and 
I don't know, there's like three different types of moss there that I used, just, just randomly putting it wherever I thought it looked good. Just applying it with hot glue. Then I put the succulents in place. And then it was time to add some little rocks. I had, uh, from a landscaping project, I had leftover pebbles. So I just cleaned those up and picked the ones that fit in there the best and hot glued them in place. And there it is. Well, that's going to do it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, I hope I've inspired you to go create something. See you next time.